Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pro Wrestling What Ifs. I am the host, the outlaw of Long Island, Zach Droll. Today is Pro Wrestling What If Champions. I'm here joined by JJ of the Backstage Brawl. How's it going, JJ? Doing good, doing good. It's hot, it's beautiful outside. And we're here to talk about some wrestling. I'm, I'm with it, I'm with it. Loving it. As a summer baby, you couldn't get better. Also now, underneath me in the Zoom layout format, we got Matt of the Jeek Nation. How's it going? What's going on, Zach? Doing great. Thanks for having me. And last but not least, if he's not talking baseball, basketball, or football, he's talking pro wrestling. We got TK the Tank, Tom Kenny. How's hey, it going, Zach, man? Freshly clean, freshly shaven. I'm ready to go. All right. So, uh, as I stated, this is Pro Wrestling What Ifs. It's like a weekly show where we break down the biggest questions in pro wrestling and see if we can rewrite history the way it was meant to be. So, I'm going to start off with you, JJ, to my to my right. Um, you have five minutes on the clock to give me your What If Pro Wrestling Champions starting now. Okay. So, um, in regards to the What If Champions, um, I want to preface it by saying that for a lot of, a lot of um, you know, whether it be wrestling, basketball, baseball, whatever, uh, the higher your rank, whenever you achieve an accolade, the higher your expectation. So, in a lot of cases, I don't necessarily like to add on uh, championships to a person who didn't necessarily have it. Uh, so this is probably cheating a little bit, but in regards to adding on to a legacy, I would like to add on a, to a legacy um, 2002, in my opinion, prime Rob Van Dam. Now, if you guys have watched anything in regards to like Ruthless Aggression era, you know, Raw Smackdown, you had Raw, that roster that had Sky Steiner coming along a little later on, you had NWO, Booker T, you had Shawn Michaels, Triple H, you had all them heavy hitters. RVD in 0102 was the steal of that invasion. From the second he stepped in, he made it as if he was a natural in the WWE. Like if I was I was barely five years old watching it, so I could barely fathom what was going on. And even years later on watching and with all the applied context, I'm thinking like this dude fit in like a hand and glove he was not an outlier this is not sean stasiak this is straight like this guy he came onto the roster and immediately he was in a triple threat match that he had no business being in between him and and kurt angle and stone cold steve austin there's a reason it's because he was hot he was a hot commodity he basically made jeff hardy into a single star that year in 2001 in the invasion of 01 and leading into 02 they were essentially begging for this man to get the title. Unfortunately, he ran into who a lot of people ran into that reign of terror from Triple H. Took out a lot of guys like RVD, my honorable mention, and Booker T in regards to winning the title around that time frame. But RVD is my pick to add on uh, then accolade that is a championship. All right. That was, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. 100%. All right. Uh, now I guess uh, let's just reset the timer. Uh, I'm going to give it to you, Matt, because I, 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 I already know TK is, and I, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Switch it up. Wow. All right. So, one. Wait. wait. Starting now. Okay. So, I'm going to give a real quick uh, recap. I did not talk to JJ about this. Um, well done, JJ. Very, very well done. My person is also Rob Van Dam. However, wow. however, <laughs> 2000, mine is what if RVD stays champion in 2006? If you recall, RVD wins the title at uh, one, uh, one Night Stand from John Cena. Uh, two days later, on the initial ECW show, he is awarded the ECW world title. It is now a double world champion. Less than 30 days later, Rob Van Dam is arrested. Uh, for speeding and drug possession. And the very next night, drops the title to Edge. Two nights later, drops the title to Big Show in ECW. And for me, it is what if RVD stays champion? Because the ECW new show 
was focused solely upon the star power that J.J. so eloquently mentioned. It was based upon Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam was the one thing missing from the first one-night stand that people wanted to see. He stole the show in 06, and he was on top of the world in wrestling. That show died because of what he did, and it died b- before it got a chance to live because Rob Van Dam got arrested. And then we had a reign that Edge got that he probably would not have gotten had RVD not been arrested. So we probably see at SummerSlam, instead of Edge and John Cena, we more than likely see Edge versus Rob Van Dam at SummerSlam. And I think the ECW brand and the WWE and the Raw brand are changed completely different if Rob Van Dam stays champion in 2006. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a completely different time in history. That is very true. Especially with, with, from ECW One Night Stand with the hottest New York crowd probably ever. I, Yeah, I, I definitely would like to see that type of history. You know, I, I came in towards the end. It's weird. It's weird because in a weird way, like it kind of adds to John Cena's legacy because a lot of people gave him flack for that 380 day reign that started uh, in that edge scene rivalry because they were like, now nah, we need to get, we need to take this off of RVD as soon as possible. And like, you know, if you think of the biggest errors in professional wrestling history, you think of errors where people were holding the day, the title for less than 200 days, like a stone cold rock, you know, and that attitude era ruthless aggression early on. So if it potentially gave a, uh, credence to add more character work to an already hot John Cena and that triple threat feud. So that's dope. Yeah. Cause edge got the title and then dropped it back to Cena and then Cena went on their long run. So it's a, t- it's a title reign for edge and a title reign from Cena that probably don't happen. Yeah. All right. Let me reset the timer. And now on to TK's yeah. uh, addition to this TK, your time starts now. Well, uh, the guy I thought of, a guy who never held a championship in a uh, major promotion, but was due to get one in 2008. Uh, At the time, he was the Raw general manager, and he had just beaten uh, CM Punk in the finals of the King of the Ring to be the 2008 King of the Ring, and that's William Regal. Uh, William Regal is an all-time great grappler. You can go back and watch any of his matches, and you just see how good this man is, how believable he was. And... Mm -hmm. He never really had a serious gimmick, a world title gimmick. Uh, He was the general manager back in the 2000s with Chris Jericho uh, messing with his tee. Uh, He was the everyman William Regal. He had a lot of different gimmicks, but finally in 2008, it looked like they were gearing him up with the most powerful man in WWE. He was was almost like the Thanos. He had all the power. He was the general manager. Uh, If you remember, there was a Raw where Triple H and Randy Orton were having uh, championship match he shut down the whole broadcast because he was the general manager and you were going to do what he said and finally they had him leave because he broke the wellness policy for the second time uh in a loser leaves raw match against mr kennedy but my what if is what if he hadn't broken that wellness policy and what would that summer have looked like now he had already beaten punk and was the first man to make punk tap out at the end of that king of the ring tournament and we know punk had money in the bank so let's say we go and we see William Regal as a power hungry general manager and punk with the title in the summer. There's so much you could do with that. Uh, William Regal trying to get that title off of punk punk being kind of like a punk, a Chris Jericho type guy really getting under Regal skin. But I would have had that build to a culmination of a feud at SummerSlam where William Regal finally gets the world heavyweight title and becomes champion. And then uh, you can, instead of uh, Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels, because Chris Jericho get it on forgiven. You could have William Regal have the title for Unforgiven, No Mercy, Cyber Sunday, and use his authority and use his power to uh, berate the audience. Just imagine William Regal sitting there with a crown, a scepter, the big gold belt in his throne, uh, turning off the lights if he doesn't like what the fans does, so he'll sit in the darkness. William Regal having all the power. And then finally comes Survivor Series. You bring back John Cena, big match John. 
to come take that away from William Regal. And so you basically have William Regal have a title reign from SummerSlam to Survivor Series. It totally changes his legacy. It makes him a champion. It makes him a former heavyweight champion. So when you go into ECW and you go into his feud in 2009 with Christian, maybe he doesn't lose all three of those heavyweight title matches. Maybe the third match in England, William Regal wins the ECW title. And then you have William Regal winning two heavyweight titles, one in front of his home country. And you have William Regal hold that ECW title until the final episode of ECW in an Extreme Rules match where you have Christian win it back instead of Ezekiel Jackson. Uh, I think it really would have changed William Regal's last couple years with the company, and you really could have uh, given him a solid main event run. And that's my what if. What if he didn't get suspended for uh, his wellness policy violations? And what if he was able to secure the big gold belt? Uh, what would that 2008 have looked like, you know, just to see that? I think that would have been really cool. All well right. done, TK. Yeah. I guess, like, since I, we have a little bit more time, I guess I, I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll throw a random what if out there for you guys to think about. Yeah. What, what if Punk never dropped the title to The Rock at Royal Rumble 2014, if that was, or 2013? 2013. 2013. And, 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 and that triple threat match happened at, at WrestleMania. Would, me, personally, just jumping on, I would have been so excited. WrestleMania 29 was the first WrestleMania I ever attended, and I could not believe I was getting twice in a lifetime. I had already seen The Rock wrestle with Cena at Survivor Series in Madison Square Garden, where Punk won the title. And the thought of having, to me, not even a triple threat match, to me, the WrestleMania 29 match, a match that would have went down in the annals of WWE history as one of the biggest matches of all time, was WrestleMania 29 literally fell on Punk's 500th day as champion. That would have been the day the WrestleMania fell out. So you could have 500-day title reign streak versus WrestleMania undefeated streak. Keep Punk versus Undertaker. Keep Cena versus Rock if you want. Just don't have it for the title. And I feel like that was the marquee match. That was the biggest match. But, you know, Cena and Rock are huge names, and they had their deal, so that had to happen. So instead of a triple a threat match, I would rather seen Punk versus Undertaker if Punk, you know, kept the title all the way to Mania. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's like I, I, I have a lot. Like that, that's why I came up with the show, the the what ifs of pro wrestling, because to be honest, like even though like the the sports hitless motto is there are no no, the, 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 no <laughs> ifs only facts, but pro wrestling is not your conventional sport. You're allowed to have these what ifs because there's there either has been stifled but by injury, a, a wellness policy violation, um, even like or or a, a death. Because, right. hell, if, if you think about Finn Balor's title reign, what would have happened if he never got injured? Mm-hmm. Where, yeah. where would WWE be if he never got injured? Where, where, where would Finn Balor be if he never got injured? What about Kevin Owens? The only reason Kevin Owens had that title reign was because – so we may never ever got the Festival of Friendship. Who knows how the Kevin Owens – Chris Jericho storyline, that great storyline looks like if they're – if Kevin Owens never becomes the world, uh, the universal champion too. And, right? That so, is very true. And with, a, and, being, and, with, and with you mentioning Punk, again, injury was the only reason why they put injury to Orton was the only reason why they put the title on Punk to begin with. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we, we don't get that. They don't take a chance on Punk without injury. Yeah. So there's, and, there's and no- to TK's suggestion, I can when uh, when Regal won the King of the Ring. I said they're putting the title on Regal, and like I was like, I'm so happy for him because the man deserves yeah. it. And then all of a sudden he was gone, and it was like William Regal has been suspended for the wellness policy. And I'm like, wow, uh, worst yeah. timing for him because it really was like seeing him sit on that on the on the King of the Ring with his new, you know, the bam bam bam. His, you know, oh, that music was great. Used all the time now, you could tell he just oozed charisma, and you could see this guy is gearing up to be the world champion this year, and this is going to be William Regal's year, and it didn't happen, which is really unfortunate because uh, you could have done anything you want, you could have. You could have had him really abuse his power as general manager and as king and as champion. And really, we could have had a, a storyline we don't see much in WWE where you see someone attain that much power. And uh, he really could have used it to his advantage. You could have seen him say he was fighting Batista at Unforgiven. He could have put Batista in uh, huge handicap matches. He could have had the whole ECW roster fight yeah. CM Punk. You know, he could have done whatever he wanted. Yeah, I, I could imagine him defending the title on Raw and after, you know, five minutes of getting his butt kicked, he grabs the microphone, he rolls up the ring, grabs the microphone, and automatically makes a stipulation. You know, yeah. right then and there. And who can and, stop him? He's a and you know what? And and you know what? In regards to like, you know, rivalries, like you can just sit on the CM Punk deal. Like if anything, you can 
not necessarily you can't replicate, you know, the summer of punk in 2011, that realism, but you can have certain remnants of that where CM Punk is the person that no one dubbed and no one chose as the rightful champion. And at that point in time, CM Punk wasn't a champion. You could have that rivalry with William Regal and William Regal is basically looking down on him, representing everything that's not a champion, a person with, you know, not a big body type, long hair, dark hair, tattoos and all the, you know, you know, straight edge, like who, like what, what is this? this stupid the, wrist rolling. You know what I mean? Mixed this? martial arts yeah, guy, like such thing. a non, such a non Vince McMahon guy. And just this brute power hungry businessman that Vince McMahon, like if you see them in a room together, you could think they, they, they probably like are seeing eye to eye together. Like that's a pretty cool thing. I do find it interesting that a lot of, like uh, the the what ifs that we've been mentioning, especially you know, in regards to like uh, you know Matt bringing up the the rain with um, RVD, it kind of ha- fell under that you know three year time frame with the initial uh, you know um, wellness policy uh, that got implemented after Eddie Guerrero, which is another what if for another episode. C Zach, but um. But yeah, like, you know, it it just fell under the amount of people who had what ifs. You think about Mr. Kennedy, you think about Jeff Hardy the first time when he was he was supposed to be one of those money in the bank wins that I believe was CM Punk's first, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, You know, so like you have like a lot of those like uh, things that, you know, got put on the back burner because a lot of, you know, Vince was like, all right, we need to nip this in the bud because a lot of our guys are going off like in real life and we need to kind of get that you know controlled so in a weird way it kind of it kind of robbed us of the greatness that would have been an authority figure william regal a mr kennedy uh things of that nature all right if we do this what if champions again i'm just gonna put it out there mine's what if they put the title on dibiase uh dibiase the original the original yeah like, what if they kept the title on DiBiase when he bought it from Andre? Yeah. What if they okay. let him have that run? Because he was he was the heel. Yeah, I wish they did, man. I can't. DiBiase is one of those guys where it really was a missed opportunity for him not to be champion. I know the '80s and early '90s were different, but he was he like the top heel, like you say. Uh, you go watch clips of him just you know kicking the basketball away from the kid. Just the things he would do is just. I mean, you can't get any better than that, and. Just the laugh and everything, and the fact that he bought the championship is such a, a in character move. Uh, it's unfortunate that Jack Tunney stripped him of that title because it really would have been, I think, really cool to see Ted DiBiase as a WWF champion when yeah. there was only one, you know, main heavyweight. One belt. champion, exactly. You know, and and we're talking about like early earlier on, like WWE, well WWF in this case, like WWF has like a host of them. You think of Ted DiBiase. What about Piper? Like Piper Ooh. was the guy. You know, he was basically the 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 guy when you talk to a hardcore wrestling fan in the mid 80s where you'll, you know, when you pass the rock and wrestling in the Hogan, let's go Hogan. You just <laughs> see that cool fan that's like, nah, I'm, I'm rocking with Piper. I don't know what these guys are talking about. Like, I like the guy who's getting in Mr. T's face and like, is you ain't nothing like I'm, I'm riding with that guy. You know, well, uh, there's a handful from that era. There's DBRC, yeah, there's I, Piper, there's perfect. Uh, uh, Mr. Perfect, yeah. uh, and then also Razor Ramon. Steamboat. I, and Steamboat. I will say this, though, and I will say this, and like I, I didn't necessarily know how to preface it. I, I did mention it a little bit in regards to the RVD deal. For them to not have world titles, it did pioneer an era that I wish returns in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Um, TK... T- TK kind of hinted at it in regards to only having one world title. I think that in a weird way, having that accolade could take away in a legacy. What I mean by that is I had debates. I'm a big Dolph Ziggler fan, big, huge Dolph Ziggler fan, right? I've had debates, whether it be on the backstage brawl, shout out to you guys, or just off camera with my, with my, you know, with my other, you know, my friends. And we're talking and I'm like, Dolph Ziggler versus Mr. Perfect, career for career. Which one would you want? And a lot of people will still say Mr. Perfect. But why? Accolades wise, why? Because if you think of the memories, Mr. Perfect has a lot more memories 
in comparison to Ziggler. But when you think of moments that correlate to title wins and stuff like that, you have the two world titles. In a weird way, people look against Dolph Dolph Ziggler's image because his first world title was storyline 10 minutes. It was nothing. Yeah. And then the second one was mirrored by the concussion injury. So, I mean, like, yeah, has, like it, no one really counts them. Like, they're exactly, there. Exactly. Like, exactly. Per- perfect intercontinental title reign is way heavier than Dolph's two absolutely. world title reigns. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, and so, also, but, but you're, you're, you're young. I mean, you were five with RVD in, in you know, 0102. So you don't remember any of perfect in AWA. Like, yeah. he had a fantastic run there. Um, yeah. He's running WWF, he's running WCW, the U.S. heavyweight title reigns. Um, and you mentioned the moments. Yeah. the big, and One of the biggest moments he did is bigger with the, uh, with the NWL when he turned on the, uh, on the horseman. Like, that was a bigger moment than anything Dolph has ever done. And no disrespect to Dolph because he's a fantastic wrestler, a fantastic athlete. I, but he has no bigger moment than that. I, I, I do hate to cut this off, but we are running over time a little bit. So oh, Carl, quickly, you know. everybody... Oh. Uh, shout out their stuff, starting with you, JJ. Uh, once and foremost, uh, shout out to the backstage brawl. Shout out to the backstage brawl. Uh, you know, my guys, People's Champ, Diamond Cutter, Kid Ty, uh, Mean Gene. We wish you back soon. You know, you haven't been on recently, but, you know, uh, check us out, Backstage Brawl. We're um, on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. And, of course, Sports Hit List. Every now and then, check me out there. All right. Matt, where can we find you? Uh, of, of course. Well, shout out again to the Sports Sit List for having me on. You can find Jeek Nation content, our podcast, our wrestling podcast, Breaking Ring Rust. Shout out to my co-host, The Cold Heart, JT, and our uh, Sports Plus Geek show, the original Jeek podcast, where we talk about everything sports and everything geek. Right, and uh, TK, do you got anything? Uh, I mean, I'm on the Sports Hit List. I'm going to be on more. I'll be on more of these with you, Zach. It's always good to be here. And, uh, you know, Mr. Perfect had those wonderful, uh, you know, uh, promos where he's bowling perfect games and stuff like that. So who wouldn't want to be Mr. Perfect, honestly? I mean, no, yeah, Dolph Ziggler had this moment with Sting and Survivor Series, uh, but I would love to be Mr. Perfect. Then, uh, as for me, your host, you can find me every Thursday on the AEW Injection right here on the Sports Hill List. You can also catch me every Friday on all po- on all podcast platforms on the Box Office Losers and every Saturday for the video version on YouTube. For, for the Box Office Losers podcast. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Pro Wrestling What Ifs. We'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye. Thanks for watching the Sports Hit List. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. In fact, do it now.